Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you again today. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to, um, again, um, I'm going to be sharing some things. Um, and, and I think the most important thing is when we share, I just want you to understand that and, and some of you need to just start taking notes and writing some of these things down. Um, a lot of this stuff we've learned over 35 years of ministry, ministering for people that were literally on deathbeds, ministering to people that um, had such broken relationships they could not um, literally mend those relationships with other people. I mean, people that were in situations that they were that were really, really struggling, and uh, people that were, had addiction issues that they, they couldn't overcome, and, um, you know, those kinds of things. And we've been dealing with those issues for the last 35 years, and one of the things that we, we find consistently is um, – Many, many times, no one goes to the root and solves the problem. Um, a lot of people will deal with issues. A lot of people will deal with situations, but they will not go to the root. And the most important thing is that you've got to go to the root of all these issues if you want to solve them. If you want to solve addiction issues, listen, um, every one of us could be in literally in the same kind of situation. Hey, Bessel, good to see you. Um, any one of us can be in a situation. I know my grandfather was addicted to alcohol, and for years I was addicted to food. I was a workaholic. I was had an addictive personality. So, you know, what I'm saying to you is you might think to yourself, well, you didn't get involved in substance abuse. Well, I did early in my life. I did when I was in my 20s. Um, I just happened to, by the grace of God, um, not get involved with it later. But the truth is, you know, many, many people who suffer from um, certain areas end up having an addictive personality and and that's really the issue it's really not the substance you know when someone says well you know i love the taste of this or i love the taste of this right it's not the substance that's the issue so when we make the focus the substance then we're going to not we're not really going to see people get free the issue is not the substance hey elaine good to see you the issue on addiction is not the substance you know somebody might say i love the feeling of the drugs or i love this or i love that that's not the issue um, there's a couple basic issues that, that you have to begin to deal with. And, and I know there's some great research out there on brain chemistry, how literally um, when you start taking drugs and you start doing alcohol, it actually changes the brain chemistry. Um, and that's, there, there's an element of truth to that. Um, Carolyn Leaf is really good if somebody wants to, uh, L-E-A-F, if somebody wants to look at some of their stuff. It's, she's got some stuff that's pretty pretty interesting on on that. There's a lot of inroads in brain chemistry. There's a lot of inroads in areas of, uh, there's a lot of teaching out there in narcissism, which actually is part of the addictive personality. Um, and then we also, you know, have issues of the flesh and people will deal with those. But, but let me tell you, that's still not the root. And we're going to talk about the root today, but also I'm going to deal with some of these areas of addictive personalities. One of the things that you'll find a lot of times with people who have addictive personalities is that because they have rejection, you're dealing with, hey, Christina, good to see you too. Because they're dealing with rejection, basically a lot of their their life is centered around how the world affects them instead of how they affect others. So in a lot of cases, there's there's they, they do not understand how um, they do not understand the fact that there's very little concern about how the others are affected by them. In other words, if you if you ask their loved ones, if you ask people close to them, you say, you know what? It's it, all they're worried about is how how they're affected or what affects them. There's very little there's very little concern about how how they affect others because they don't see that. That's not an issue that they really see. So in other words, it's not that they do it on purpose. It's just they don't see that. They don't see the fact that really their their world is all about how it affects them. People will say things like, you know what? They didn't do this for me. They didn't do that for me. They didn't do this for me. This didn't happen. Um, I, I never had this or I never had that. And see what it, what it comes down to is it's all this idea of, you know, how things affected me or what I'm missing or what, what, what was it, what wasn't able to be taken care of as far as, you know, my needs or my wants or whatever. So the addictive personality is part of it, but let me give you the, let me give you the root. Okay. Cause we can deal with the addictive personality and many times, there's a lot of ministries that will deal with the addictive personality. They'll start dealing with the narcissism, which is which is good. They'll start dealing with different things. Hey, Basil, but but the real issue with addiction and the real issue in in cases where people have addictive personalities and it's huge 
is rejection from the father. See, see, that is the key issue. And we could say all day long, you know, I'm not talking about the fact that, you know, what the quality of their father was. That is not the issue. So often people say, well, I had a good father. I had a good childhood. You know, I still ended up on drugs. That's not the issue. The issue is the rejection from the father. And when they deal with rejection issues, you're going to find out that that is the biggest key right there to being able to solve rejection problems. If husbands and wives, moms and dads want to see their kids out, out of um, areas of addiction, you need to pray that they will begin to fall in love with the father. Now, falling in love with Jesus is one issue. Falling in love with the Holy Spirit is another issue. But falling in love with the Father is the main issue when you deal with people who are involved in addiction in those areas. And let me tell you why. And, and this is something that's so critical, but many, many times because of the way our Father has been or because of a relationship with our Father or difficulties that we've had with our Father, what happens is we can we can love the Holy Ghost, we can love Jesus, but we, but, but it's difficult to love the Father, or we love the Father, but only to a degree. We kind of keep him at arm's distance. But you have to understand that the Father is the one that literally brings, I mean, he's the one that holds the blessings. He's the one that really holds relationship. He's the one that, that really, when we begin to fall in love with the Father, it be, all life begins to kind of fall, come in line. It begins to, it begins to fall in place. That's why Jesus made a statement in John 14. Think of what he, think of what he says. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus is access. He's the door. He says, I'm the door. Anybody that comes any other way is a thief or a robber. So he, Jesus is the door to the Father. And the Father is access to the kingdom. Okay? Jesus is access to the Father. Father is access to the kingdom. And and, and Father is the, the, the one. The Father is the one that holds the kingdom. He's, he has the kingdom blessings. He even says that the Holy Ghost is what? The promise of the Father. So one of the things that Jesus is always trying to do is he's always trying to lead people to the Father because Jesus is the door, but the Father is the goal. He's the one that we want to fall in love with. And many, many people have difficulty falling in love with the Father. And the reason we fall, have fallen in love with the Father is, is because our relationship with our Father was fractured. And, and many times the way we view our Father has to do with how much love and concern and care we have for Father God. Now, someone can say, well, you know what, I'm past that. Um, many times we try to get past it, but it's, it, it was a long process for me before I really came to understand how to fall in love with the Father. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that today, um, how to fall in love with the Father. Because that's the real issue. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we have to understand, you know, John 10, 9 says something very interesting. He says, I am the door. By me, if any way enters in, he shall be saved. In other words, he shall receive deliverance. He shall receive healing. He shall receive holy. And he shall enter in and issue. It says enter in and, and, and go out. But actually what it means is he will... He will go in and he will issue out to others life and he will find pasture. He'll be fed. We get fed into, we get fed when we enter into the kingdom. Jesus is access, but he's the door. See, and what we have to realize is the father is the one that we really need to begin to become a son with. Sonship comes from the father. So, so many of us are trying to bypass that issue where we're trying to say, you know what, it's all about Jesus. And Jesus, when you're, when you're unsaved, it's all about Jesus. Absolutely. It is all about Jesus. There is no other goal that you have. When you're unsaved, you need to find Jesus. He is the only door. There is no other way. You can't skip by Jesus and go in by the Father. You can't skip Jesus and go in by the Holy Ghost. You cannot skip Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by him. But the idea is not to stop at Jesus. Don't stop at the door. Go to the Father. And so, so often, um, many people that have addiction issues and have addiction personalities, I can look back and I can always, almost always see issues with the Father. They might say, well, I had a good father. That's not the issue. The issue is, was he loving? Was he caring? Was he, was he connecting with you and so forth? Even in my situation, 
you know, it wasn't until later on when my children are older that I ever found out how to love them. I was a good provider. Yes. I did a lot of things for him. Yes. You know, I prayed for him. Yes. I took him to church. Yes. I went ahead and, and, and took him on trips and took him to other places. And, and, you know, a lot of things that I did was, was good. But the thing about it was to, to my kids, when, I, especially my daughter, and I found this out later in life, what ended up happening was, um, I loved her and I, and I cherished her and I said all kinds of great things about her abilities and who she was and all that. But I always said, but now, I told some stories about this before. It was kind of one of those things where, you know, she asked me and you know, she said, dad, look over my papers and tell me how I'm doing. And, and I did. I looked over her paper and, um, you know, I say, honey, this is great. This is awesome. You know, this area, this area, this area is good, but you could do this and you could do this and you could do this. And see, my daughter always heard, but all she heard was, you're not good enough. The way you are is not good enough. You know, I could go to her and I could say to her, you know what, you know, she would tell me something about, you know, what she learned about the Bible and so forth. And I'd say, hey, that's great. And so forth. Then I'd, I'd add something that I knew, which was maybe, maybe a little something she didn't know. You think to yourself, well, you're just trying to help your kids know what that saying is, honey. You know, your revelation was not good enough. Here's here's my revelation, which is an addition to yours. See, a lot of times we do things and we don't realize it. It's always like, you know, um, if, if we don't, if we're not careful, it's always like you're not good enough. You got to change. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. And see, what it does is it begins to feed that narcissistic personality. It says it's all about me because you know what? Everybody wants me to change. Everybody wants me to be different. Everybody wants me to be this. And we build that narcissistic personality which says, you know what? I'm good enough just the way I am. I'm going to run my own life. I'm going to, I'm going to do things my way. So many times for Christians, that's the big issue. I'm going to do things my way. Amen. Um, but you know what? That's, that's one of the issues that I see so often is we're, we're back in that situation where we're trying to go ahead and, and, and um, be in charge. And, and the re reason we're in charge is because we don't really, at, at the end of the day, we don't trust the father. You could say you do, but sometimes people say, well, I don't trust the father, you know, for finances. I don't trust the father for this. I don't trust the father for that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're honest and you really want to get to the bottom line, you don't trust the father to run your life. And, and, and see that the, ultimately when we get to that place, then what we do is when we begin to run our own lives, we become independent of the Father, we become a rebel. And when we become a rebel, we end up getting ourselves in all kinds of messes. One of the things we have to do is, is we have to understand that the, that the Father, God, is there to take away all the issues from our earthly father. Earthly fathers will fail us. Earthly fathers will have issues. But God, the Father, is there to destroy all the things that caused all the rejection, all the issues, all the problems, all the things that our earthly fathers weren't able to do. And, and, and praise God, they should have been able to do, but they weren't able to do because they didn't know. But see, one of the things we have to realize is, is that it's not good enough to have a relationship with Jesus alone. It's not good enough to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost alone. You've got to have a relationship with the Father. And that is where not only the, a lot of the rejection gets broken off of you, because ultimately, rejection is the issue. You might say to ourselves, you know what, I, I have this and I have that. No, rejection is the issue. Rejection is the issue. That's the reject, that's the issue with, with, with anybody that's dealing with, um, substance abuse. Rejection is the issue. Anybody that's dealing with, you know, narcissism, rejection is the issue. Those people that are dealing with a, with a, with a personality that's a rejection personality or a, a, personality where people get involved in substance abuse or they, you know, it's an addictive personality. It's always the relationship with the father. And Jesus came to give us a relationship with the father because the father and his love is the way to break it. It's also the way to become sons. You know, think about it. Um, you know, when, when we, when we look at, when we look at it, and I'm going to share a few issues, a few things with you. Um, says here in Acts 1, 4, and being assembled together with them, that command, Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, 
which saith I, you shall, you shall have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Jesus is the access, but the Father is the one. Jesus is the baptizer, but the Father is the one who gives the gift. It's the promise of the Father. Why did, you, why did the Father put the, the Holy Ghost into us? So that we could have, it says in John 17, and this is, this is a, this is a great, great, great promise, okay? John 17, 22 says this, and the same glory which thou givest me. Now he's talking about, and, and, and I want to read it from John 17, 20, because sometimes people say, well, that was just for his disciples. It wasn't just for his disciples. It was for everybody. And I want you to, to, you know, some of the greatest wisdom in the world comes from John 14, 15, 16, and 17. It, I mean, it's, it's some amazing stuff, life-changing stuff. But, but you have to realize it's all about, it's all about the relationship with the Father. That's what he's really talking about. John 17, I'll read it from verse 20. It says, neither pray I for these alone. In other words, I, neither, I'm not just praying for my disciples. I'm not just praying for these. I'm also praying for he said, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. In other words, everybody who believes the word, believes on Jesus because of the word of the first with the disciples, then with the early church, and then with us, all the way up to us. This is for every Christian. I'm praying this, that they may be one um, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou has sent me. In other words, you don't become one. Everyone thinks it's one because we have one doctrine. It's not. Everyone thinks it's, you know, we're all going to be one because everybody agrees on, on you know, what everything means. Everybody's baptized in the Holy Ghost. No, it's, it's they're one in the Father. That's where sonship comes from. They're all sons. And sonship comes from being led by the Spirit. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But here's what it says in verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I in, the, in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect, or they may be whole, or they may be mature in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them, even as thou hast loved me. I, I don't know. I don't know. When I understood that, I thought to myself, this is the most, one of the, one of the most life changing scriptures I've ever heard. We have the same glory, the same Holy Ghost inside of us, so we can become one with the Father in the exact same way that Jesus was one with the Father. Now think about what he said. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. I don't do the works. He said, my Father in me does them. So in other words, people say, well, how are we going to do the works of Jesus? When you're one with the Father, the Father inside of you does the works. You don't have to worry about doing the works. You have, you, you have the relationship with the Father, and it's the Father that does the work. Jesus said, I alone can do nothing, but it's my relationship with the Father. When you see me, you see the Father. I've so disappeared, and I've so become like the Father that the Father is, I'm a reflection of him, and because I'm a reflection of him, I'm anointed without measure. So, so here, Jesus makes a promise to us. He said, you can become one with the Father in the exact same way that he became one with the Father. And when that happens, you'll become mature, you'll become full, you'll become complete, and you'll have everything that you need. So many times we're going through life and, and we're, we're wounded and we're, 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 we're shattered in a lot of areas of our life because we don't have everything we need because we're not having, you don't have the relationship with the Father. The most critical relationship you can have is the, the relationship with God the Father. And, and one of the things we have to realize is, is, is every bit of full sonship comes with that relationship. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 8 real quick. I'm also going to, you know, put my marker here in John 16. We're going to come back to that in just a second. But look over here at Romans chapter 8. Everybody wants to talk about being a son of God, but let me tell you something. We can't be sons of God without the relationship with the Father. See, again, that's where sonship comes from. Sonship comes from having a relationship with the Father. We're adopted into um, the same lineage that Jesus was there, but we're adopted by the Father to become his son and have that relationship with the Father. So many of us have difficulty Really, honestly, 
Um, you know, we can talk about it. We can say we think about it. We can say we know it in our heart and we can know it in our mind. But there's a difference between knowing in your heart and in your mind and in your, uh, I mean, knowing in your mind and knowing in your thought process. But but when it gets down here and you begin to have that love for the Father, something changes drastically about your relationship. Something changes about your ministry. Something changes about the ability for you to be able to transmit love to other people. It totally changes. A lot of times we have a lot up here. It's in our mind, but 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 inside, inside, we don't have the heart of the Father. And see, the heart of the Father is what changes people. It's the heart of the Father. Um, we can look at gifts, we can look at callings, we can look at all kinds of things, but it's the heart of the Father that changes people. You know, one of the things it says in verse fourteen. And, and this is something that, that, you know, everybody has the power to become the sons of God. To those who call upon his name, he gives the power to become the sons of God. Okay. But, but that's not sonship just because you have the ability to be a son. Sonship comes for this. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now listen real carefully. Your sonship depends upon your relationship with hearing the spirit of God. That's why the spirit of God is put inside of you. Your sonship. Your ability to be able to, to connect with the Father, your, your ability to be able to be a son and a daughter has to do with your ability to be led by the Spirit of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. In other words, it's not about him being in charge and telling you what to do and somehow or another this being a relationship that's, that's, that, that, you know, uh, what you're, you're kind of like a slave. That's, that's not what sonship's about says this, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That word Abba to, to, the, to the Jews has to do with, with them beginning to cry out to the Father as a, um, you know, it's a term of endearment for small children to the Father. It's that love for the Father. And see, so often, um, that's the issue. We don't really have the love for the Father. The best thing husbands and wives can do for each other if they have an addiction issue is instead of stop praying that they stop drinking, pray that they fall in love with the Father. Confess that they fall in love with the Father. Confess that the Father's love is, 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 is shed and wrought in their heart, that the Father's love is, is beginning to break through, that the Father's love, they're beginning to understand the depth, uh, and, and the, the, the wit you know, it's in Ephesians chapter three that they understand the Father's love, because right there is the issue for 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 people who have addictive personalities is is their issues with the Father. And, and we can look all day long and say well, it was my earthly father, but there's but but you know that's not that's not going to get us anywhere. To say it's my earthly father and this is problems and and I can promise you it was your earthly father. You did have issues. You could say, well, he was a strict person. He was a, no, no, that's not, that's not the issue. You might say that, but the truth about it is you never connected with the love aspect of it. He was never able to give you love. He was, he, he had that same rejection issue. He wasn't able to give you that closeness and that, 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 that love. So therefore what happens is you end up and your personality becomes warped because you didn't have the love of your father. He might have taken care of you. He might have done some good things. I'm not saying that. It's just that down deep inside, he did not connect. It wasn't that love. And you want to know why our kids are messed up is because there was never that love. It's not about taking care of them. It's not about doing stuff for them. It's not about all that stuff. It's about the fact that matter is, did we show them unconditional agape love? See, it's not, it's not the love that we have. Like, you know, I really love my kids. That, that doesn't change them. Well, I, I really, you know, I really did my best to take care of them. That doesn't change them. Okay. Because you know what? Because because we don't understand it, what what really love is all about, and we don't understand really self self sacrificing love. Most of our love is self seeking, and even though we don't want it to be, it is. The truth is, it's the love of God, and the love of God can be transmitted through us, but you can't transmit the love of God through us until the love of God comes to us, and it's a much different thing to love Jesus and to love the Holy Ghost than it is to love the Father. It says this, we've received the spirit of adoption. The, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now listen, and if we're children, we're heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If we're children, now interesting, he made that statement. He said, if we're children, 
<coughs> but he's really talking about the, the the Romans. In other words, he's talking about how much of uh, how much of the time are we led by the Spirit of God? How many how much of the time are we sons of God? How much time how much of the time are we really moving in the things of God, and how much are we moving in our own things and what we want to do and what we think is important and all these other things? So if we're again joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings in this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now, some people look at suffering and they think to themselves, you know, I've got to go through life suffering. You know, part of your suffering is you deny yourself. Part of your suffering is, is that, that, you know, to be a son of God, you've got to deny what you want to do. You have to deny who you think you are, what you want to do, all the other things in your life, things that I think are important, things that I want, things that I need. That's part of the suffering. Jesus, it said, Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Now think about that. He learned obedience. So obedience to the Father was part of the suffering process. Obedience to the Father is, is when you put your flesh to death. You put your desires to death. You put all these things to death that you want to do. All these things to death that, that, that you know, well, I think God wants us to be happy. No, God wants us to be obedient. Why do we why do we become obedient? Because blessings are from obedience. God wants to bless you. See, it's more important that you are obedient than it is that you are happy. It's more important that you're obedient than it is that you're satisfied with all the other things around you. It's more important that you're obedient than it is that you move in the gifts and start praying for everybody. Okay? That's okay. But but the gifts won't solve that disobedience problem. The reason we have disobedience problems is because, again, we lack the connection with the Father, where we die to ourselves. That's the place where you die to yourself. That's the place where you die to all your wants. That's the place where you die to all your desires. That's the place that you desire. I love you. I love you, Father, so much. I will give you everything in my life. It doesn't matter. I will live a life that, that you may, that, that I may not have chosen for myself, but you chose for me, and I'll live a life that way because I love you that much. Part of the suffering process that we go through says here, if children and heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him. How did he suffer? He said, I don't do anything of my own will. I do everything that you want me to do. That's part of the suffering process. That's what he's talking about here. He's talking about that, that we may be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. I'm, he's not talking about, you know, some, some sufferings. Yes, you might get persecuted. Yes, you might end up in, in situ, some situations. Somebody may speak against you. But that's not really the essence of what he's talking about here. The essence of what he's talking about here is the fact that we are suffering against ourself. We're suffering against our sin, against our desires, against our wills, against everything else that would lead us in a different direction than the Spirit is leading us. And see, that's the key issue. We we, we suffer when we say no. We suffer when we say, no, I'm not going to do it that way. Yes, it's not easy. There's no easy button. I told someone this weekend, I said, listen, you know, Staples has this big old red button called the easy button. I said, I want you to take get a picture of that and put it up on your refrigerator. Okay. And, and, and I want you to understand it's not easy to deny your flesh. It's not easy to do these things, but you know what? I want you to, as you push the button, say, God, it's not easy, but I'm doing this for you. I'm doing it for you. It's not easy, God, but I'm doing it for you. And just keep pushing that button, keep pushing the button and say, God, I'm doing it your way, not my way. Not the way that I want to do it. Not the way that's important to me. I'm pushing the button, God, because it's your way. And see, that's what's so critical. Suffering has more to do with saying no to you than it is saying um, that, you know, what, what I want, what I need, what I think is important. I mean, that's, that's the key issues. And that's the relationship with the Father. See, you're not going to get that if you just... You know, sometimes people will worship and they say, well, I'm a worshiper. And they listen to praise music. You're not going to get it in praise music. I mean, you might get thrilled. There may be some things in praise music and all that, but you're not going to get it in praise. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be when you and the father spend time together and say, father, listen, I don't even know how to love you. I want to. 
I, I know I know that you are, are the one, Lord God, that can that, that can bring all this stuff to me. I know, Father, you're the one. I know, Abba. I can't even say that word. With it, the love of God just, just overwhelming me. But you, Abba, you're the one. You're the one. I need to find out a love of you. I need to find out how to fall in love with you. It's not about the worship. It's not about the songs. It's not about the anointing. It's not about your presence. It's not about feeling all this stuff. Abba, I need to know you. I need to experience you. I need to fall in love with you. If I fall in love with you, everything else will fall away. If I fall in love with you, everything else, everything that keeps me from being a son, everything that keeps me from being a daughter, everything else will fall away. That's what adoption's about. You were chosen. Adoption is not, you know, people think, well, you know, you were adopted. You know, what more, what, what better blessing can it be because when you're adopted, you're chosen. You're picked out of everybody. You're, you're, you're adopted because you know what? God loved you that much. He adopted you. Romans 8.32 says this. He, the father, that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with Jesus freely give us all things? The father wants to give you everything. But it's how it's your relationship with the father that makes all the difference. Hey, Donna, I see she's with us. Kellyanne, um, Rod's with us. The father and your relationship with him, it's everything. That's why Jesus said there's coming a time in Romans, in, in, in John 16, he said, there's coming a time when you're going to ask me nothing. But you're going to ask the father in my name and he'll do he'll do anything that you ask him. See, that's the relationship with the Father. When we get to the point that we have the Father and his relationship with us is so close and it's so powerful, that relationship with the Father is it, that, that we have that, that love for him. And I mean, I'm talking about, like I said, when, when we say no to all these other things in our life, we say no to everything else is important. We have that love for the Father. Then Jesus said, you ask him anything in my name and he'll do it. Anything that's connected with the spirit of God, anything that's God's will in your life, anything that the father has, has put in your heart to do or, or to have, he'll do it. You see, so many times the reason that we don't have all the things that, that we, what we need in ministry is because our relationship with the father is broken and, and, and our relationship with father God has not been, has not been developed to the point. That literally, we trust him for everything. We lay our life down for him and say, Father, everything is yours. Abba, everything is yours. And then, then we go to make that happen. We go to make that happen. When, when, when we do that, something fundamentally changes. Something fundamentally changes. When you say, Abba, everything is yours. See, you can say, I have an addiction problem. It's not an addiction problem. You're trying to escape. The, the essence of addiction is escape. The essence of addiction is, is wanting to do it a different way, doing it their own way. That's the essence of addiction. It's escape. So you ask yourself a question. You know what? Instead of escaping, surrender. God, I'm surrendering. There's things, God, in my life, Areas where I've been, I've been disappointed. Areas, God, where things haven't worked out the exact way I thought they would. Areas, God, where where there's just, you know, situations that haven't worked out the way I felt like they should. But God, listen, I love you. And I mean, I'm in this thing for the long haul. I'm in this for the long haul because I love you with all my heart. I love you, God. I love you, Father. You know, 95% of the time when it says God in the Bible, it's talking about the Father. Um, you know, now we know that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are one, okay? And there's one God. The Lord God is one God, okay? But there are different elements of that God head. Um, and, and, and the Holy Ghost is not the, is not Jesus. And Jesus is not the Father. You know, what I'm saying, the Father's not the Holy Ghost, okay? They're all one. But they're all distinct. But they do serve different purposes. God the Father. 
is the holder of the kingdom and all the blessings. Okay. Jesus is the access to the Father. The Holy Ghost is the power to receive all the things. And it's, it's literally the spirit that the Father uses, the, the spirit that Jesus uses to give you all things, for you to be able to receive mm -hmm. all things. He says, I'll be it. The Father will teach you all things and show you all things. I love the scripture that it says here in John 16, and I'm going to just read that to you real quickly. Starting with um, John 16, 12. Real, real critical. I love this scripture. It says, yet I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, talking about the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. In other words, he is going to, the Holy Ghost is, is the truth, okay? He is going to give you the truth. When Jesus said, I am the truth, it's not, not talking about Jesus wasn't the truth, but, but the Holy Spirit is the one that will reveal Jesus to you. He's the one that will reveal the truth. He's the one that will reveal the word to you. You know, Jesus is the word, but he's the one that will reveal the word, the written word and everything else. You receive it by the Holy Ghost. I've known individuals who get saved and all of a sudden they say, man, once I got saved, the Holy Ghost came inside of me and all I understood things I didn't understand before. It was like, I didn't understand any of it. Now I understand it because the Holy Ghost came inside. But how be it when the spirit of truth is coming, he'll guide you in all truth for not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you the things to come. Now listen to this. And he shall glorify me. In other words, I told you, the Holy Spirit points you to Jesus. Jesus points you to the Father. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and he shall show it unto you. In other words, he'll show you the things that are mine. He'll show you the things of me. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, say I, that he shall take of mine, and he'll show it to you. In other words, everything that the Father has, is given to Jesus. Why? Because of relationship. You understand? Relationship. I and the Father are one. I and the Father. In other words, I don't have my own desires. I have the Father's desires. Everything in my life is, is dedicated to the Father's desire. My Father is the one that, that has makes the decisions, and I do whatever I see my Father do. I don't do anything on my own. You understand, the Father makes all the decisions in Jesus' life. There are, there are things that, like for instance, Jesus doesn't even know when, when the end's going to come. It's, it's, it's relegated to the Father. Now, the Father's given all judgment to Jesus. There are, there are different th things that each part of the Godhead has. But the truth of the matter is, the Father is the one who is one, and he made all the decisions in Jesus' life. And the relationship that he had with the Father meant that he was anointed without measure. The anointing of God was, was based on sonship. It was based on, and not the fact that he was the, just son of God, like he was distinct. No, he was a son of God because he was completely committed and completely surrendered. You want to know why he became, why he became the, 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 the real son of God? It wasn't just, it wasn't just in, in air, in airship naturally, it was in airship spiritually because he gave up everything. He said, I came to do not my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. I came to do the will of the Father. And he became one. And he said, we have the same Holy Ghost. No, we don't have the same lineage that Jesus had. We don't have to. We were adopted in. The same vine. The same vine that Jesus is in, we're, we're adopted in. The same sonship that he has, we can have by being led by the Spirit and suffering with him, dying to our own selves, dying to our own desires, dying to our own wants, dying to everything in our life that's, that's, that's more important than what the Father wants. If we suffer with him, we become a joint heir. If we suffer with him, we become a son, complete, have everything we need. So if you want to really move into the kingdom of God, you've got to say no to what you want and your desires and what you think and all the things that, that you decided was important. Now, some people will, you know, 
say that God agrees with everything. Let me tell you something. If God agrees with you, most of the time you're not hearing from God because you've made yourself God. If the Father agrees with you most of the time, it's you are not hearing from God because you have made yourself God. God will, it, 95% of the time, God will, God will move you in a different direction than where you were. It may not be a large change, but, but, but there'll be something that God does to modify what you think and what you believe. I don't care who you are and how long you've been in Christ. When you, when you hear from God, God's nature is a little bit better, a little bit more pure. And no matter how, how you get to that place, he'll always begin. I mean, even Jesus himself, who loved the Father, totally committed to the Father, when he was getting ready to be crucified, he said this. He said, Father, not my will, but yours. Even Jesus, who had gone through a life of obedience all 33 years, suffered all 33 years, lived a perfect life without sin, still came to a place that he said, Father, I've, I've got to deny my desires. I've got to deny my will. And I've got to go ahead and do what you want me to do. Nevertheless, thy will, not mine. What I'm trying to tell you is this. If you want to find, if you want to find life, if you want to find the ability to be able to move into the kingdom, if you want to find the ability to be able to heal the sick, raise the dead, do all that, if you want to be able to have the love of God flowing inside of you, many of you say, that's what I want to do. But the truth is you're not willing to pay the price because you're not willing to die to yourself. Now, the, 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 there's, the remedy for addictions, the addictive personality, is you've got to die to yourself. you got to die to yourself. It's all about rejection. It's all about wanting to be in charge. It's all about wanting to, you know, was, I, 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 want to, I want to do what I want to do, and I want to be in charge, and I want to, I want to you know, I've, I've heard individuals say to me, you know, I'm tired of men telling me what to do. I'm tired of people telling me what to do. I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and you know, I, I don't want to hear what other people are saying. Truth of the matter is, God puts people in our path to help us. If you don't have a spiritual head that you can be in headship, that they can be in headship to you. And I'm not talking about, you know, for, a, for obviously for a wife that's a husband. Okay. He needs to be in spiritual headship with you. Um, if you're saying to yourself, well, you know, my father's really not, I mean, my, my husband's really not following God. He's really not following the Lord. Okay. Then you need to draw close to the father. You need to draw close to the Father. Don't reject him. Don't reject your husband. Don't reject what he's doing. But you need to draw close to the Father. Because guess what? If he doesn't have a relationship with the Father, and he doesn't have a relationship that's close with the Father, he needs somebody in his life to show him that relationship. Wives, if you want to change your husband, fall in love with the Father. Fall in love with the Father. So much so that he looks at you and says, what in the world? What's come over you? What what change have you made? Why do you think Jesus changed so many lives? When he walked into a place, the atmosphere changed. Why? Because the Father walked in with him. When Jesus went ahead and healed the sick, the miracles were done. Why? The Father did the work. It's the Father inside of him that changes everything. And see, if you want to change your husband, you want to change your sons, you want to change your daughters, you want to change people around you, then it's the Father in you that will change them. So you got to have that relationship with the Father. The relationship with the Father that, that, that is inside of you will change everybody around you. Jesus would walk in the streets, and let me tell you, people that were hardened, you know, tax collectors like Zacchaeus and others that, that were professional criminals, he mentioned one thing. Today, I'm going to be in your house. That changed his whole life. You understand why? It's the love of the Father inside of him. He became one with the Father. He said, you may become one with the Father that they may all know. What? That they may all believe that I've come to the world. Why? Because they will see the love of the Father inside of you, which will captivate everybody, anybody. And the glory which I gave you, 
Lord, I've given them the same glory you gave me. That they may be one, even as we are one. You want to know the secret of ministry? The secret of power? The secret of, of breaking free? The secret of mending any relationship? The love of the Father. The love of the Father inside of you. It will draw your husband to the Lord. It will draw him. There's nothing more powerful. You want to restore relationships with your kids? Let the love of the Father change you. Let the love of the Father. And let and be the same Father to them that he is to you. See, so many times we don't have that kind of love. It's not possible for us. But when the love of the Father comes inside of you, and the love of the Father is is shed abroad in your heart and the love of the father comes and changes you on the inside. It will make you be like Jesus who said, I don't do anything of my own will, but the will of the father, you'll become the father to your children that will cause everything to change. You'll become the father to your children that will, that will, that will literally break the power of rejection in their life. So I want to, I want to, I want to encourage you. You, you want to mend relationships. You want to, I, I'm, I'm just working my way through that. That's the second book I'm working on right now is, is supernatural keys to heal any relationship and, and, and mend even broken relationships. What I'm saying to you is the love of the father. Jesus died for you to be able to have access to the father. Yeah, I see, Amelia. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Love of the Father. It changes everything. I'm going to talk a little bit more tomorrow about that. And then I'm going to head to Landrum for a couple of days. And then I will be back with you. I'll be back here in Fayetteville. On the weekend, I'll be in Landrum. Um, i actually going to Rock Hill Wednesday night. And then I'll be in Landrum on Thursday and possibly um, Friday. And then I'll be headed back. Anyway. God bless you. I will talk to you guys tomorrow at 1215. See you.